So in this video, we're going to go through some really simple, straightforward SN2 reactions. So as a series of exercises, why don't you start with the starting material and see if you can dr correctly draw the product of each of these SN2 reactions. So I'm telling you that they are SN2 reactions. So work on them yourself, press pause, work on them yourself, and then when you're ready, press play and we'll go through them. All right, so let's have a look at this first reaction. Actually, before we go through um, this, remember that in the SN2 reaction, we're always, in, in all sub nucleophilic substitution reactions, you're always forming and breaking one bond. So you're forming a bond between carbon and the nucleophile, and you're breaking a bond between carbon and your leaving group, whatever that is. And so you have to identify your nucleophile and you have to identify your leaving group and then you have to remember that the SN2 reaction goes with inversion of configuration so it always goes with inversion in some cases that's important in other cases it's not so it's only it really very important in situations where we have a stereocenter so certain cases we'll have a stereocenter other other cases we won't so let's with that those things in mind, let's try drawing the, pro the product of this first reaction. So we have butyl iodide with potassium uh, methoxide here. So what's our nucleophile and what's our electrophile? Well, if you ever need a clue, it might help to think about where the dipoles of each of the atoms are. And, and it can also help to draw in the hidden or implicit hydrogens and even the carbon uh, when you're looking at these structures. So this line diagram of butyl iodide I remember, uh, remember means that you've got a carbon here attached to two hydrogens. And you can think of it there being a partially negative charge on the iodine and a partially positive charge on our carbon. So this is our, um, this iodine is gonna be our leaving group and this carbon is our electrophile. This is the site where all the action is gonna happen. And our nucleophile is the one that usually has the pair, it has, well, nucleophile always has the pair of electrons that is gonna be donating of electrons to our electrophile so the nucleophile is our OCH3. So that means that we're going to form a bond between carbon and our nucleophile so we can draw that carbon in OCH3 we're forming a bond between carbon and the nucleophile and if it helps we can draw in those those H's and then we're going to be breaking a bond between carbon and our leaving group. Now when we're breaking this bond the pair of electrons goes from the carbon iodine bond to the iodine. So that means that we're going to have a new lone pair on iodine. So our iodine is going to become negatively charged. So make sure when you drew this, draw this in that you have a negative charge in your iodine. And conversely, your oxygen is going to go from owning a lone pair where it's negatively charged to sharing a lone pair with this carbon. So it's gonna go from having three lone pairs to two, which is gonna make it neutral. So this is the product of this substitution reaction. Okay, so let's look at this next reaction. So here we've got a five carbon chain. We've got a bromine on the position number two. And again, thinking about what is gonna be our leaving group, what's gonna be our electrophile here. So delta minus and delta plus, we've got a partially positive charge on our carbon. And we can draw in the, the carbon here just to remind ourselves of this. So this is gonna be our leaving group, the BR. The carbon's gonna be our electrophile. So where this reaction is actually happening. And our nucleophile is gonna be the CN. Now I've drawn in just a negative charge on the carbon, but remember there's actually a lone pair on that carbon. That negative charge implies that there is a lone pair. You can draw out the full structure of CN, C, triple bond N, and a lone pair. So the nucleophilic end of carbon. Now both ends can act as the nucleophile, but it turns out that it is the carbon of CN which acts as the nucleophile here. And this is going to donate a pair of electrons to the carbon. And then we are going to, so it's gonna go from negative to neutral, and we're gonna break a pair of electrons from carbon to the bromine. So let's draw that out. And so we're gonna form a bond here, C, triple bond N, actually I'm not drawing it very straight, but my OCH3 is getting in the way. So um, we're gonna also have a hydrogen here. 
Now, then it all, okay, and then our bromine is gonna go from having three lone pairs of electrons and now it's going to have four. So just like the iodine, it's gonna go from neutral, where it has three lone pairs, to negatively charged, where it has four. Okay, so that's our leaving group, Br, and these are the bonds that form, and we figured out the bonds that form, the bonds that break. Now lastly, we do have a stereocenter present in this molecule, so carbon two, is a stereocenter. It's attached to four different groups, bromine, hydrogen, CH3, and a propyl group here. So this means we have to show inversion of configuration at this carbon. So bromine here is a wedge and the hydrogen is a dash. Now when we want to show inversion of configuration, what we can do is flip any two groups on the stereocenter. Now it's usually most practical to just flip the, the wedge and the dash. In this case, the bromine is a wedge and the hydrogen is a dash, so we're going to make hydrogen into a wedge. And this means that the cyano or C triple bond N is going to be a dash. So this should be the product of this reaction. Okay, third example. So the electrophile here is going to be, well, the leaving group is going to be our chlorine, and this is going to be our electrophile, the carbon here and we're going to be donating a pair of electrons from the carbon uh, attached. So this C, um, triple bond C is called an acetylide. You may often see it drawn not like this, however, you may often see it drawn like this, carbon attached to lithium. Remember that lithium is very much, very has a very low electronegativity, so it's got a very strong delta positive, if you will, the carbon is delta minus. In fact, you can almost think of it like a, a, a polar bond here. So you can draw in a lone pair and a negative charge on our, our carbon and lithium as a positive charge. So I drew it in with a negative charge on carbon just to make it a little bit more identifiable as the nucleophile. But keep in mind, you may see it sometimes drawn where you've got a single bond. It looks like you have a single bond between carbon and lithium and really means you just got a lone pair on the carbon. So it's going to donate a pair of electrons to the carbon. We're going to displace the leaving group, which is our Cl. And when we redraw this product, we're going to get this product here. And now we're forming one bond and we're breaking one bond. So we are, here's, let's call this carbon number one. Let's call this carbon two, three, and four. This is not official numbering. This is just to keep track of, of where things are. So you're forming a bond between carbon one and carbon two, okay? So carbon one, and now let's draw in carbon two, attached to carbon three, which is attached to carbon four. So two, three, and four. All right, so that's the bond that we formed between, like I said, carbon one and carbon two. And if it helps to draw out the hydrogens, so much the better. And we are going from a negative charge on carbon because it owns that pair of electrons and now sharing that pair of electrons with the carbon. So it's going from negatively charged to neutral. And the chlorine, meanwhile, is going from neutral to now it's gonna be negatively charged just like the bromine and iodine were. Okay, so that's our final product here. And you notice there's no stereo center, so no inversion, um, no inversion of configuration. So here, uh, let's show this construct. Actually, you know what? Um, never mind. Uh, let's see. So we've got our bromine here, which has a delta minus, and our carbon has a delta plus. And we can take a pair of electrons. So our, our carbon is, again, the electrophile. It might help to draw in the, the implicit hydrogen. The sulfur has a pair of electrons here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a pair, uh, sulfur is our nucleophile, so we're going to take a pair of electrons from the sulfur, it's going to attack the positively charged, partially positively charged carbon, and we're going to break the carbon-bromine bond, and this is going to lead to formation of sulfur, CH3, and we're going to go from three lone pairs on sulfur to two, uh, we can still draw in that hydrogen and we are going to displace our bromide so it's gonna bromine is we call it bromine when it's neutral bromide when it's negatively charged so bromide iodide chloride 
that I that IDE means that it's got a negative charge. Sulfide actually, it's called sulfide. So that's our leaving group. Now um, here, it it looks like we've got a we've got a wedge here on the bromine and a dash here on the hydrogen. So at first glance, it's you know we would think okay, well we got to make sure that we do inversion on this carbon, and you know technically this reaction does occur with inversion. So it, it does occur with inversion. Uh, it always does. It always goes through this backside attack mechanism. But the product that we're forming, if we drew the sulfur as a dash, as, as it would be implied from this diagram, just keep in mind that, that um, there's no stereocenter present on this molecule. So these there's one, there's only three different groups attached. These two groups on the carbon are identical. So it actually doesn't matter for our problem if you draw it in as a, as a dash or as a wedge, it, or even with no stereochemistry indicated because it's not a stereocenter. So just keep that in mind that even though we haven't drawn in, this is not drawn in as a stereocenter, so it doesn't really matter in this case whether we draw it as a dash or a wedge or straight line. And secondly, even though it's not a stereocenter, just keep in mind that the reaction still does proceed with inversion of configuration, even though you can't, can't really see it. So those are some simple SN2 exercises. Uh, later on, we'll go and do some more complicated ones, of course. But these are just to get you your feet wet in terms of figuring out the bonds that form, the bonds that break, and um, how to figure out what your product's gonna look like in these types of examples.